Alright, hello everyone. Welcome to my night two predictions of WrestleMania 37. Now, last night was pretty interesting because, number one, the show started about a half hour late because there was weather in Tampa, inclement weather to be specific, with the rain, and WrestleMania started about a half hour late, but show went on. I have to say, last night, main highlights for yours truly was, obviously, Bianca Belair winning the SmackDown Women's Championship, Bad Bunny and Damian Priest, they got the job done against The Miz and John Morrison, then, last night, Strowman tossing McMahon off the, Shane McMahon, that is. Pretty much Shane McMahon fell onto his back from the steel cage. That was completely funny to watch that. <laughs> well deserved for Shane O'Mac. And then Cesaro last night. You know, that was... That was fun to see Seth Rollins being swung on all around like that. But... I only got two matches wrong. I'm a little upset McIntyre didn't win. But hey, that's the wrestling business. And then... Not to mention last night. And to think that Natalia and Tamina are getting a championship match. So I'll get into that first. Get it out of the way. Because I want to get into the women's division first for my night two predictions. But there were a couple botches last night. I will mention that during Kevin Owens' segment, I noticed there was a weird howling noise. Because... The first half hour of the show last night, they were having the wrestlers cut promos for their matches because how were they supposed to fill the time on Peacock? And how do you think that uh, one of the microphones is like, I'm like, oh boy. And then during the women's tag team turmoil match, I heard that they went to black because... Let's just say some X-rated material was seen in front of the fans. In person attending. But for us watching on Peacock, we didn't see that. So there might have been children watching. That's understandable. But needless to say, one of the bots, you had Michael Cole thinking, Oh, Bianca Belair kicked out. No, she clearly pinned Sasha Banks. I literally knew as soon as the crowd was cheering and I heard the ding, ding, ding. I'm like, wait a minute. Bianca won. I'm like, why is Michael Cole saying, oh, all of a sudden, Bianca Belair didn't win the match, but she clearly did. So let's hope that a couple of things get fixed tonight. However, in Tampa, there is some bad news. There is more inclement weather in the forecast today. So, um... Might be the same result from last night. I hope not. Um, in the past couple of years, when WWE has tried these open outdoor events, they've gotten lucky with the weather. Uh, supposedly, this was not the year, but... Remember this. Dallas, where AT&T Stadium is, and then SoFi Stadium in 2023, the good news is, they are indoor venues. So... Um, there is a chance that the weather will not be important to them. Definitely not in 23, because it's an indoor venue for WrestleMania 39. But hopefully this will be the last time in a while we'll worry about weather for a wrestling event. So let's get into my predictions for tonight. Seven matches. There were seven matches last night. So let's get into it. First up, obvious match I'm going to predict first. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler taking on Natalya and Tamina. Pointless match. This is going to be somewhere later on, but uh, match will not even last 10 minutes. Nia and Shayna are going to win. And down the line, you know, I'll just mention this. And I know I'm being a little bit predictable here. But down the line, they're going to let Na Lana and Naomi get a championship match. Especially because Lana has been waiting for retribution against Nia Jax. It's coming. I mean, we'll see. But it's coming down the line. Probably after WrestleMania. So, that's how I think it will end up. And now we're going to move on 
to our women's championship match for the singles title on the Raw division. You have Asuka taking on Rhea Ripley. This is too soon for Rhea Ripley to even be in a women's championship match. I understand she just came up from NXT, but that doesn't give her any excuse, okay? That doesn't, all right? Look where she was last year. Look where she was. She was wrestling in the Performance Center against Charlotte Flair. That was supposed to be an anticipated match last year. Now, sure, the match could have ended up either way, but that's irrelevant now. So Asuka's going to defend. I'm sorry, but down the line, if you're going to have Becky Lynch return, you know, why put the belt on Rhea Ripley? It doesn't make any sense. I'll be very surprised if Asuka doesn't win tonight, because if she doesn't, I'd be shocked, so... I know I originally, I think in one of the wrestling groups, I predicted Rhea Ripley was going to win. Let me just make sure because I don't want to be wrong here. Yeah, I originally predicted Rhea Ripley, but I'm going to change my mind and go with Asuka. Alright, so next up, we're going to go to our other singles match. Two more singles matches. Yeah, it doesn't involve championship opportunities. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn with Logan Paul. Now, Logan Paul got involved in this feud because, let's just say, Logan Paul was impressed with Sami Zayn making a documentary. Okay. This is where Kevin Owens always shines. He always does pretty well at WrestleMania. Most cases. I think he only has one loss. So, Kevin Owens is going to win. And if he doesn't, I would be very shocked because this is where Kevin Owens normally shines. If Kevin Owens loses at WrestleMania, especially Owen Mania, or I think it's KO Mania from what he calls it, I'd be very shocked if Kevin Owens loses. So Kevin Owens is going to win. And sorry, Sami Zayn, back in the locker room with you and your friend Logan Paul. Now we're getting into the darkness. The Fiend has returned. And he's getting another championship match against Randy Orton. This is where the new Destructive Fiend is going to come in and win the match. And more importantly, for Randy Orton, uh, I don't know what to say here, but Orton loses. I know Orton normally does win at Mania. Most cases, he does. But, I can remember two other previous times he has lost. Well, actually, no. Only one time he's lost. That was to The Undertaker. But other than that, you know, Randy Orton has had WrestleMania experience, but The Fiend is going to win. And if you don't put The Fiend over Randy Orton, that's a big problem right there. Especially down the line, The Fiend may be facing Lashley for the WWE Championship. There is a possibility it's going to happen after WrestleMania. So the Fiend does win. Okay, let's move on to our championship matches. First up, we're going to go to the United States Championship, where Riddle is going to take on Sheamus. Now, if you don't remember 10 years ago, Sheamus won the World Heavyweight Championship against Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 29. And we all remember how that ended up. I don't know. I just don't see Riddle losing. If Riddle loses, I'd feel really bad for him. Riddle's had a really good run. Yeah, he sure may act like a goofball, but... Riddle knows what he's doing in the ring. I mean, this guy has been... What he, what he said he is. In NXT and on the main roster. So if Riddle loses to Sheamus, that would be a problem at WrestleMania. So Riddle's going to retain. And the other champion that will retain tonight will be Big E. Because this is some kind of Nigerian drum fight. But 
if Big E doesn't win, that would be a huge mistake. And can Apollo Crews knock off this Nigerian act? It's really getting annoying. He's from Georgia. Act like you're from Georgia. Alright, I look. Remember when Kofi Kingston had that Jamaican act? Sure, it was adorable when he first came up. But when he became himself, look where it got him. It got him multiple tag team reigns with the New Day. And it helped him win the WWE Championship two years ago. So, please, let's just hope once Big E wins, Apollo is going to knock off this dumb Nigerian thing that he's doing because that's not the character Apollo Crews should be. I, I'm sick of it. I really am sick of it. Okay, I just am annoyed with it. And, you know, I will mention one positive with Big E. And this is something positive. Recently, Quavo, the rapper, anybody remember Quavo? He was part of the hip-hop trio Migos. Remember him? He's done the Big E theme song recently. So, Quavo would be disappointed as well. So Big E wins, and if Big E doesn't win, something is not right here, because the last thing you need is Apollo Crews to keep up this Nigerian gimmick. It's just dumb, it's stupid, I don't see any point in it. Why would Vince McMahon even allow this to happen? I don't know, maybe it's just his ego. But, I'm sorry, but this is not the real Apollo Crews. It really isn't. Alright, so now that I'm done ranting about that, let's move on to our main event of the evening. And this hopefully should be the main event. The triple threat match for the WWE Universal Championship. The winner will represent Friday Night SmackDown as the champion. The lead champion. So here we go. Roman Reigns taking on the winner of the 2021 Royal Rumble Edge. Taking on Daniel Bryan. Now. This is how I think things will end up. This is likely going to be where Daniel Bryan will pin Edge. This is going to be a long lengthy match. And given the fact that this could be the last time Daniel Bryan gets one last WrestleMania moment. And sorry, Edge, you've had too many of them over the years, even before your injury. It's about damn time that Daniel Bryan gets one more moment. And for Edge, you know, if he's going to act like a heel like he used to back in the day, okay, good for him. You know, good for him. Keep it up. You know, we might want to see that. Daniel Bryan is the underdog. He's always been the underdog. We like that about him. And two years ago, yeah, he was a heel. He was an egomaniac. And he's been a heel character twice in his career. But now you have the fans on his side. This is wonderful. And more importantly, Roman Reigns is getting booed. So, therefore, your winner and the new Universal Champion will be Daniel Bryan. So, that being all said... That's going to wrap up my predictions of night two for WrestleMania 37. We will be back in May because the next pay-per-view will be Money in the Bank and a nearby site in Tampa. I forget where it is, but I know it's going to be somewhere in Tampa. So with that, thank you all very much for watching and until the next one, please take care.